Pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, it is nice to meet you. My name is Che Jung Gi from Bartholomew Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and I'll be your host today. I'd like to sincerely thank everyone who came to Shincheonji Online Seminar from various countries around the world. I hope it will be a time of receiving God's grace as you perceive the true meaning of the Bible through this seminar, which openly testifies to the words of the Old and New Testaments. Before we hear the testimony, let us first offer up a prayer to our Father God with a grateful heart. Our Father God, the Creator of all things, we truly thank you. We give you all thanks and glory for allowing us to have Shincheonji Online Seminar Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter and allowing perception to all the believers around the world regarding the will of God and Jesus and heaven. Many believers have come gathering to this precious seminar at this time from many parts of the world. Please allow them to receive special wisdom and allow them to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to perceive. Please guide each and every single one of them to the eternal kingdom of heaven and life by understanding your will. We ask that you take control over the lips of the instructor who will be sharing your word today and bestow upon him your Holy Spirit in abundance so he can fully testify to your word of life and power. We ask that you be with us from the beginning of the seminar to the end as we earnestly pray that every believer of the world receives your great grace. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Following our last seminar of Intermediate Lesson 19, we'll hear the testimony under the title, Intermediate Lesson 20, The Son Who Receives the Inheritance. We'll learn in detail regarding the inheritance God wants to give us and the reality of the sons who receive that inheritance today. I pray that all of you will hear the word today and perceive God's purpose and will and receive all the blessings God wants to give us. Now, let us welcome up Instructor Yu Youngbin from Bucheon Church of Bartholomew Tribe. To all the pastors, theology students, and believers from all over the world whose hope is in heaven and eternal life, greetings. It is nice to meet you all. My name is Yu Youngbin, the head instructor of the Pucheon Church of the Bartholomew Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I sincerely welcome all pastors who are in attendance today. I am so glad you're in attendance. Today, we're going to look at Intermediate Lesson 20, the one who receives inheritance as seen in the New Testament. The main reference will be from the contents of Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, and Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. There may be some pastors who know about today's content because they have read the Bible a lot, and some who may not know. But I hope all of you can listen to today's lecture and find out the answer to what God's will is. First, I will briefly introduce the content of Galatians chapter 4. Galatians was written about 2,000 years ago, and the one who wrote the book of Galatians is Apostle Paul. The main contents of Galatians 4 are first, what are the conditions for receiving inheritance from God? Second, who are the sons who receive inheritance from God? And third, we will take a look at the persecution the sons who receive God's inheritance receives. We will first read Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 5 from today's main reference verse of Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. What I'm saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns a whole estate. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, 
that we might receive the full rights of sons. God said, as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time comes, they will receive the full rights of sons. Then, what are the conditions to become a son and receive inheritance from God? It is to fight and overcome Satan as seen in Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. Why would one have to fight and overcome Satan to receive God's inheritance? First, let's examine God's position and reality through the events of Adam in the history of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1 and 2, God created man in His image and likeness. It is said that God formed the man from the dust of the ground and gave life to him and became a living being. This man is Adam. And God entrusted the heavens and the earth to Adam, commanded Adam to rule over and take care of it. And Adam, who started with the Spirit, will be the first to receive God's inheritance. God made a covenant with Adam that he may eat from any tree in the garden, but not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. However, Adam and Eve broke the covenant through the deception of Satan, that is, the serpent, and all creation has been taken away by Satan. Therefore, Adam, who started with the Spirit, returned to the flesh, and all his inheritance was taken away. At the first coming, in Luke chapter 4, verse 5 to 7, it is said that all the kingdoms of the world were handed over to the devil, and according to the words of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 2 to 3, and verse 23, which is a prophecy at the time of the Lord's second coming, it is said that all nations have fallen from the wine of adultery and are married to the devil. Then doesn't this mean the devil has been ruling over the nations for 6,000 years? Just like how God gave all things to Adam as inheritance. What was God's heart like when all nations and everything God has created were taken away because of Adam's sin? I am sure all of you have experienced losing what is valuable to you. How did you feel at that time? Didn't you desperately want to get it back? God didn't lose what just was a little item. He lost all creation. Wouldn't God want to get back what He lost with a desperate heart? So, what must God do to get back all creation that was taken away? In Revelation 20, verses 1 to 3, God said that He would seize the dragon and lock him up in the abyss. Isn't it only when Satan, who has taken away the world, is seized, that God can finally regain what was taken away? However, just because this promise exists does not mean that Satan will go into the abyss on his own. To capture Satan, there must be a war, and the war must be won. If we don't fight and win, wouldn't it be impossible to restore the entire world? So Jesus fought and overcame the devil, and He promised victory on this earth as well. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 to 11, the male child and the brothers fought and were victorious over the dragon with the blood of Jesus and the words of their testimony. It is said from this time on that now have come the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God. And as it is in heaven, through the victory here on earth, the kingdom of God will be established and all creation that was taken away will be restored. Therefore, those who inherit God's inheritance will be those who fight and win against Satan and the de devil 
and take back all creation that was taken away. Jesus promised in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, that the name of God, the name of the holy city, the New Jerusalem, and the new name of Jesus will be written on him who overcomes. And he said that he will make the him who overcomes the Son of God. To find out, let's read Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Revelation 21 verse 7 says that the one who overcomes will become a son of God and will receive the inheritance of God. Just as Jesus overcame in heaven, the promised shepherd, the him overcomes on this earth, will become a son of God and inherit the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. He also promised that there are sons who will inherit God's inheritance with God's shepherd who overcomes. In Romans chapter 8 verse 19 says that the creation awaits an eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Shouldn't we become the reality of the sons of God who receive inheritance? If so, who are the sons of God who will appear as heirs? To give everyone the conclusion first, at the end of age, the time of harvest, they are those who have been born of God's seed, harvested, the sealed 12 tribes of the new kingdom. Then, why do the sons who will inherit from God appear only at the time of the second coming at the end of age? The reason is because the chosen people do not keep the covenant and betrayed in every era. To find out, let's look at history in the Bible. God created the heavens and the earth and gave them to Adam as inheritance. But Adam sinned by believing the serpent's words and betrayed. God found Noah, the ninth generation of Adam, and judged the worlds of Adam who sinned and established Noah's world. But Ham, Noah's second son, was cursed like Adam because he revealed Noah's nakedness. And Noah's second son, Ham, ended up worshiping Gentile gods. At this time, God came to Abraham, the tenth generation of Noah, and made known to him that his descendants would enter the land of Egypt and what would take place four generations later. God came to Moses four generations after Israel went to the land of Egypt and fulfilled the promise with Abraham. Also, God judged Canaan that sinned after allowing them to enter the land of Canaan after the exodus from Egypt. And in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6, God made the first covenant with physical Israel and gave them the law to keep them. However, the descendants of Israel who received this law also sinned because they worshiped Gentile gods during Solomon's time in 1 Kings chapter 11. As seen in Hosea chapter 6, verse 7, like Adam, they have broken the covenant. In each era, God chose the chosen people and made a covenant with them. But because of their betrayal, they could not receive God's inheritance. So God promised the creation of a new thing in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22, in order to create sons who can inherit God's inheritance. God prophesied that he would sow two kinds of seeds and make a new covenant for the creation of this new thing. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27, the prophecy about the sowing of two seeds for the creation of a new thing. 
The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and of animals. About 2,600 years ago, in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27, God prophesied that two seeds would be sown for the creation of a new thing. This was fulfilled through Jesus about 600 years later. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, God sowed the good seed, that is God's seed, in Jesus' field, that is, the church of Jesus. And Satan, the devil, sowed weeds over it. The good seed we saw in Matthew chapter 13, verse 37 to 39, are those who have been born again by the Word of God, that is, the sons of God. And the weeds are those born of the words of Satan, false doctrines, the sons of the devil. Jesus let them both grow in the same field until harvest. At the time of harvest, that is at the end of age, the weeds who are not harvested are tied up in bundles and burned, and the wheat, the sons of God, born with God's seed, are harvested to the barn. Then, among those born of these two seeds, who will be the ones to receive inheritance from God? In Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, it is said that even a son who will inherit God's inheritance will be subject to guardians and trustees until the appointed time. This appointed time will be the harvest time mentioned in Matthew chapter 13. To be harvested at the time of harvest is to obtain the right to be a son at the appointed time. But those who are born of the devil's seed and remain in Jesus' field without being harvested are those who are enslaved under guardians and trustees and cannot inherit God's inheritance. Therefore, among the two seeds sown in Matthew chapter 13, those who are born as God's seed at the time of harvest and are being harvested will be the sons of God who will inherit God's inheritance. Then, all of us, we should check through the Bible whether we are all enslaved under guardians and trustees or whether we are sons who inherit God's inheritance. Today, which is a time of harvest, is a time when we can become sons who inherit God's inheritance, which is why we must make sure we are harvested. Then let's check the reality of where the barn is the sons who will inherit from God are harvested to, and who they are, through the words of Revelation chapter 14. Let's read Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. It is said that there are 144,000, the first fruits of Mount Zion, with the Lamb. The reality of the barn is the 12 tribes of Mount Zion. And the 144,000, the first fruits, are the sons who will inherit God's inheritance. It is said that the name of God and Jesus are written on their foreheads. So they are those who have received the seal of God in Jesus. They are the servants of God who were created by the seal of God brought by the angel in Revelation chapter 7, the sealed 144,000 of the 12 tribes. This wouldn't be a physical seal, right? In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, it is recorded that God is the Word. Therefore, the seal of God is the Word of God. This seal is the Word in the beginning, that is, the Word of promise, and it will be the prophecy of the four Gospels of the New Testament 
and the word of promise in the entire event of Revelation. Therefore, when God puts a seal, it means that person is acknowledged as belonging to God, and the word of God is engraved on their minds and hearts. The number of those who are sealed will be from the sealed, 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel, the sealed 144,000 from the 12 tribes. As seen in Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, and Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10, they are the kingdom of priests purchased by the blood of Jesus, whose sins are atoned, and they will become those who have fully mastered the will of God. Also, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 14, there is a great multitude of white who come out from the Great Tribulation, washed by the blood of Jesus, and there are those whose sins have been atoned as well. 2,000 years ago at the first coming, Jesus took up the cross and shed His blood for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Jesus was able to overcome the devil and take away the sin of man. So as we saw in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20, Jesus established a new covenant with the blood of Jesus. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. When and for whom was the blood of Jesus shed for? It was shed for the creation of the 12 tribes of the Father's kingdom at the time of revelation fulfillment. With Jesus' blood, the 12 tribes of the kingdom of God were established as seen in Revelation chapters 1, 5, and 7. Therefore, they are the kingdom of priests purchased by the blood of Jesus and the great multitude in white. They are the sons of God who receive God's inheritance, who appear at the time of Revelation fulfillment. And they are God's people purchased by the blood of Jesus that was shed 2,000 years ago. In an era of faith that is like an immature child, the believers would just say under the steward, you just have to believe in Jesus to be forgiven and saved. You're already an heir. However, after understanding the reality and God's position, we can see that the 12 tribes who've been forgiven with Jesus' blood of promise, born of God's seed, harvested and sealed at the time of harvest, are the sons who receive their inheritance from God. Then what is the inheritance that the harvested and sealed sons of God receive from God? Let's read Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. It is said that God will send the Spirit of His Son into our hearts at the appointed time. So the Spirit of His Son will be the Spirit of Jesus. After that, He promised that you will no longer be a slave, but a son, an heir through God. This appointed time is the fulfillment of Revelation. So, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus promised He will come in a person and be with the person. What is the inheritance of the sons of God with the Spirit of Jesus receives. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9 to 11, because it says that He will send the Spirit of the Son of God to give life to mortal bodies, what He promised is eternal life. Also, He said in John chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, that the sons of God who have been born again of water and the Spirit can enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, what God gives is the Spirit of Jesus, 
And then inheritance that the sons of God receive is the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. We will learn more about this in Revelation chapter 21. In Revelation 21 verse 7, it is said that those who overcome become sons of God and inherit God's inheritance. Then, where are the heirs? As we saw in Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 to 6, it is the new heaven and new earth created after the first heaven and first earth have passed away. The holy city of New Jerusalem is coming down to the new heaven and new earth. The holy city that is coming down is the kingdom of God in the spiritual realm made up of God, Jesus, and the twelve martyred disciples. Because this heaven and God are with us at new heaven and new earth, there will be no more death and there will be no more mourning, crying, or pain you will inherit eternal life. Similarly, God promised that those who fight and overcome the devil will become his sons and will receive inheritance. As we saw in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, the name of God, the name of the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, and the new name of Jesus, will be written on the hymn overcomes. God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven are coming down to the hymn overcomes. Isn't this how one can receive the inheritance of heaven and eternal life? According to this promise, in Revelation chapter 12, the male child and the brothers fight and overcome the dragon, and from this point on, the kingdom of God, salvation, and power will come. In other words, the reason God gives inheritance to the hymn overcomes is because he wins the battle with Satan and thus recovers everything that was taken away. The 12 tribes and new heaven and new earth in Revelation 21, which was created through the hymn overcomes, are the sons of God who inherit the heavens and the earth and all things from God as they are made by the blood of Jesus and the seed of God. They are those who overcome, gathered at the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in Revelation 15 after fighting and being victorious over the beast. God doesn't give his inheritance to strangers or other people. But isn't it natural for God's sons to inherit it? Therefore, our true hope and purpose is to become God's beloved children and as His children enter the Father's kingdom, heaven, and live together forever. Therefore, we want to be born of God's seed who receive the atonement of sins through the blood of Jesus and become the sealed 12 tribes, the people of the kingdom of heaven, and become the sons of God as heirs. However, God said that there will be persecution for the son who will inherit God's inheritance. Who is the one who persecutes the son of God's inheritance? To find out, let's read Galatians chapter 4, Verse 29. At that time, the son born in the ordinary way persecuted the son born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now. It says here that those who are born of the flesh will persecute those who are born of the Spirit. To understand this in detail, let's first look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 21 and 24, it is said that Abraham had two women, and this is to be understood figuratively. This is borrowing the historical content of Genesis chapter 16 and Genesis chapter 21. Through their relationship, let's look at who persecutes the son who will inherit God's inheritance. Abraham had two women, 
Sarah, Abraham's wife, and Hagar, Sarah's slave woman. God promised Abraham that he would give him a son through Sarah. However, when there was no son, Abraham gave birth to a son through Sarah's maid, Hagar, who was Ishmael. After that, Abraham had a son, Isaac, through Sarah, just as God had promised. Therefore, it can be said that Ishmael was born according to the flesh, and Isaac was born according to the promise. Ishmael, who was born of the flesh, mocked and persecuted Isaac, and according to God's will, Hagar and Ishmael were expelled. The heir to all of Abraham's inheritance will be Isaac, the son born according to the promise. Just as God said that he is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, we can see that the son of Abraham's inheritance was Isaac. He said that this event is a parable. So when the appointed time comes, the reality will appear. Just as Ishmael, a slave born according to the flesh, persecuted Isaac, who was the promised son, at the first coming, those born of the flesh persecuted those who were born of the Spirit. The church members belonging to the scribes and Pharisees persecuted Jesus, who was born of the Spirit, and the twelve disciples, who were born again through the revelation of Jesus. Just as Ishmael thought that he was Abraham's eldest son and heir, the scribes and Pharisees also believed that they had faith in going to heaven. Even today's churches of tradition believe that God and Jesus are with them. However, today when the New Testament is fulfilled, the corrupt traditional churches, which is the reality of those born of the flesh, also persecute the Him overcomes and the twelve tribes of Shincheonji, those who are born of the Spirit. I don't think there is anyone who hasn't heard the persecution of Shincheonji. Four Shincheonji members even lost their lives due to severe persecution and forced coercive conversion programs. In John chapter 15, verse 18 to 19, Jesus said that if the world hates you, you must know that it hated me first. The reason you are being persecuted is because you are not of the world. Therefore, according to the promise, today the twelve tribes of Shincheonji who were born and harvested with the seed of God are being persecuted by the traditional churches because who they belong to and the God that is ruling over them is different. We must distinguish the two gods and those who belong to the two gods through the word and be born of God's seed no matter how much persecution we receive. Also, they must be harvested and sealed to belong to the twelve tribes. So I hope that all of us will become sons of God and inherit the kingdom of heaven and eternal life from God. Let's look at the conclusion of today's word. The condition to receive an inheritance from God is to fight and overcome the devil. God can rule over the world and receive it as inheritance only when we fight and are victorious over the devil who has taken over the world and seized the devil. At this time, the churches of tradition, the first heaven and first earth, will come to an end, and the twelve tribes of the new heaven and new earth will be created through the Him overcomes, who fights and overcomes a dragon, and they will become the sons of God, who will receive inheritance. Therefore, 
The sons who receive God's inheritance are those whose sins are atoned by the blood of Jesus and are the 12 tribes that have been harvested and sealed by God's seed. Wouldn't this be the most blessed time if these people can recover everything that was taken from Satan in 6,000 years and receive God's inheritance? Therefore, I hope that all of us believe in the promised shepherd who testifies to the reality of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation and become the reality of this blessing by being born again with the word of Revelation. Next time, a more skilled instructor will come and testify to the next lesson titled Intermediate Lesson 21, Persecution and Victory of Shin Chun Jim. I hope that you will come with the heart of anticipation and have a precious time to understand the Word of God. Lastly, we will end with a powerful shout of we are one to show that we have become one in the revealed faith with God and Jesus. We are one in God, in Jesus, and in real faith. We are one. Let's all pray together and end for today. God the Father, who is the source of all life and blessings, we thank you. We give thanks and glory to you for allowing the Shincheonji Online Seminar on the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testament by chapter to take place. Today, we looked at the Word of God in Intermediate Lesson 20, the one who receives inheritance as seen in the New Testament. Please grant all the participating pastors, theology students, and congregation members the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Through the word you have given us today, help us to qualify as a son who will receive inheritance of God and guide us so that we will not lack in any way of receiving inheritance of heaven and eternal life. Also, please grant the most precious blessings from heaven to all who participated today and help us to make all the things that you plan to prosper in the will of God and the Word of God. Today, I give thanks and glory to the Father who has granted me the Word of life, and I pray all this in the name of Jesus, the giver of all life. Amen. Thank you for listening to the end. We can see from the history of persecution written in the Bible that there are two kinds of spirits in the world. Jesus made known in John 16 verse 1 to 4 that God's people will suffer sacrifices. From this, we can understand the reality of those who persecute and those who are persecuted. We must understand that today's persecution is taking place following the prophecies of the New Testament. Did everyone receive much of God's grace from today's lesson? As we have just seen from the video, we'll hear the testimony of the Word under the title of Intermediate Lesson 21, Persecution in the Kingdom of Victory, Shincheonji. The seminar will start at the same time as it did today, so please do attend and confirm where God's kingdom promised in the Bible is and enter the kingdom of heaven, which is our hope. Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, is being broadcast around the world via Shincheonji's official YouTube channel. Even as we speak, countless theology schools and pastors are requesting to sign MOU with Shincheonji, with the continued encouragement of all those who have been thirsty to hear God's Word. The door to Shincheonji is always open wide. If you have any questions about today's lesson, Shincheonji Church of Jesus, or the Revealed Word, please call the number on the screen to ask your questions. We'll make sure to guide you kindly and in detail. Now,
As we offer up all thanks and glory to God who allowed us to receive His Word, we'll conclude today's seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll finish today's Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. Thank you for being with us.